Hi everybody, come and join me and learn how to knit this fantastic cable bobble hat by Debbie Bliss. Let's get started. I've got here um, just a section of it for you to see so that you've got some idea of what the, the work's going to look like as you go along. So we're going to start off on a 4.5 millimetre needle and knit this rib. And then we're going to start this cable. This is, we, we like to call this one a stag's horn cable because it's, it looks like the sort of stag's horns. Um, and you notice when the, the hat's on, they're much more sort of stretched out. So they look really, really pretty. Obviously, while they're sort of squashed on the needle here, they don't look quite as good. So we do the first cable repeat. It's eight rows long. And we work the rib and then one, two, three, four of the cable repeats. And then we're going to start a bit of a decrease up here. So to get started, I'm going to use 4.5 millimeter needles, straight needles. And I've got the whole project takes two balls of Debbie Bliss uh, British wool Aran. So I'm going to start the hat in this one, but that's what we're going to switch over to, to look at the cables. So we start off with a cast on. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of cast on you use here particularly. Um, so I'm going to use a long tail cast on just on my thumb. So I've got lots of yarn pulled aside there, but it really, 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 truly doesn't matter which cast on you use. I like to use my thumb because it's nice and quick for me. But so I take the yarn, wind it round my thumb, and then I knit a stitch onto that. So I put the needle in, bring the yarn around, under and off. So it's a knitted cast on, but I'm using my thumb as the other needle. So we're going to cast on. I'm not going into that in detail because I know that all of you will probably have your own favorite cast ons that you use. Um, you don't need a particularly stretchy cast on for this because uh, it's quite a um, it's quite a roomy bobble hat, I would say. Uh, it's quite nice and stretchy with that two by two rib. So you don't need to worry too much about having a stretchy rib here. So we're going to start off. I'm going to cast on 98 stitches and I shall meet you back here now. OK, so I have cast on 98 stitches and what I'm going to do now is to start this two by two rib. And that means that we're doing knit two, purl two, repeated all the way down the row. So I'm going to take my yarn and just refresh you for the rib. So we put the needle in knitwise, yarn around, under and off. Remember your knit stitch, knit and knitwise, yarn around, under and off. And then we're going to bring the yarn forward to do two purl stitches. And remember with a purl, we're moving the needle up into the stitch, bringing the yarn around the top and then down and off. So we put the needle in purlwise upwards, bring the yarn around, down and off. And then I take the yarn, bring it round to the back of the needle again. And I just want to show you, even at this stage, you can see the two knit stitches have got like a little tiny V there, like a tiny V, and the two purl stitches have two little purl bumps. And this is how we differentiate between a knit and a purl. And I talk a lot about reading your knitting. And this is going to help you tremendously as you carry on, is that you know what a knit stitch looks like and what a purl stitch looks like. So you know what the next one due is. So now I've done knit two, purl two, and ready to knit two again. So I've got the yarn at the back of the work, needle in knitwise, yarn around, under and off. Needle in knitwise, that's under, around, under and off. And you can see, again, knit, purl two, knit two. You see, they look quite different on the needle. So now we're going to work the purl two. So we bring the yarn around to the front, put your needle in purlwise upwards, bring the yarn around, and then down and off. In pearls wise, in pearl wise, sorry, bring your yarn around, under and off. And then we take the yarn again, 
back around to the front and we're going to do two knit stitches. Now when I'm going to put my hand underneath here so you can see now I'm using um, the throwing knitting technique so I'm going to use my finger to throw the yarn around like that to knit and so it's quite useful then to use my finger to bring the yarn around to the front of the work to do the purl stitches. So I'm going up into the purl stitch, around, down and off, up into the purl stitch, around, down and off, and then bringing the yarn around to the back again to knit. Now, it doesn't matter whether you use this throwing style or you knit continental style. It's entirely up to you. That is how we do the two by two rib. So we do, whoopsie, knit, bring that one again. So we, go. so we knit, one, two, bring your yarn to the front and then purl, two. And you can see the difference there, just in the way you've got purl bumps, knit stitches, purl bumps, knit stitches, little V's. Now I'm going to knit to the end of the row and then I'm going to turn around and we'll see what it looks like coming back the other way. Now we're ready for the second row of the 2x2 two two rib and one of the things that people always tell me that they have trouble with when they're doing a rib or moss stitch but we'll talk about that another day is that they're never sure whether they should be knitting or purling and so this is how we tell. When you're going to do a rib, you do the same stitch that's in front of you. So remember I was talking about reading your knitting. If we look here, at we've got the beginning of the needle. We've got two purl stitches, two knit stitches, two purl stitches, two knit stitches. And when you're ribbing, you knit the stitch that's there. So I'm going to look at this and think, right, they're purl stitches, so I'm going to purl two. I'm going to knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. So knit what's there. And this is always quite handy as well when you come to cabling, which we're going to do in a bit. So that will help. So the first two stitches are purl stitches. So I'm going to put the yarn in front of my needle there, up into the stitch, bring the yarn around, down and off, and the up, yarn around, down and off. Then I'm going to bring the yarn round to the back to do these two purl stitch, uh, these two knit stitches. And you can see, look, there's the little V of the knit. So I'm going to do knit, knit. And then looking at the next two, those two are purls. So I bring my yarn into the front, and purl, purl. And if you need a little refresher on knit and purl, there's how to purl video that you'll be able to have a look and you'll make it really nice and clear with big, big yarn. So these two are knit stitches. So we do knit, knit. And then these two here are purl stitches. Bring the yarn to the front and up into the purl stitch. We go up into the purl, up, around, down and off. Now just have a look. Already you can see your two by two rib coming. So there's the purls, knits, purls, knits. And even now you can see that two by two rib. So we need to finish this row and then we work another 12 rows of two by two rib, which means that in total there are 14. So I'm going to meet you back here in 14 rows. So here we are, we've done our 14 rows total of two by two rib. I've got it on a quite a small needle here, but it will sort of stretch out really beautifully when it's on your head. So what we're going to do at this point, we have 98 stitches here, we're going to do an increase and we're going to work an increase row along the top here while staying in our rib. So our increase row will give us a total of 114 stitches once we've worked this row and then we're going to start the cables. So still using our 4.5 millimeter needles. This is the repeat for an increase. So we begin with 
knit two, because remember we're following the rib here, so we do a knit two. Then we have purl two, so we're going to purl two. One, two. And the purl two actually is the start of the repeat. And then in this knit two that we've got next, we're going to knit one and then make one in the middle and knit this one. So we're actually going to increase the stitches in between these two. So I'm going to knit the first one. Then we're going to make a stitch. And the way that we do this, it's a clever little way. We pick up the horizontal bar, which is in between the stitches. So can you see that little one there? Pick up that horizontal bar. And we're going to put it onto the needle on the left hand side. But instead of knitting it straight through here, we're going to knit through the back of the stitch. And the reason why we're not going to knit into the front of the stitch here is because if you do that, you'll end up with a hole. So what we do is we put the needle in and then just work over the top and go into the back of the stitch. Can you see that? So we don't knit this, we're going to knit that. So the best way to get there is to put your needle in and just go over the top so that you're into the back of the stitch and then just knit one. Oops, she's just dropping it off. There we go. And then we knit the next stitch. So we've increased one little stitch in between our two by two rib. Then we're going to purl two because the next two stitches are a purl. One, two. Then we're going to do that again. We're going to make another stitch here. So I'm going to knit the first one of the two. Then we pick up the horizontal bar, pop it onto the left hand needle and then put your needle into the stitch and over the back. So we're actually going to knit into the back of that horizontal bar, yarn around, pull it through and off and knit the next one. Then we're going to purl the next two, purl two, and then we're going to knit two. Now let's go through that repeat again. Um, this is what we do is we repeat all of this right the way through to the end and it will be much easier when you have the pattern sitting in front of you. So we bring the yarn around to the front because we're purling. We're going to purl two, purl and purl. Then we're going to, we've got this next two knitted stitches. We're going to knit one. Now we're going to make one. And it's shown in the pattern as M1, make one. So we pick up the horizontal bar between the stitches, put it onto your left hand needle, put the needle in and turn it round so that you're at the back of the stitch, knit it, and then we knit the next one. Then we have two pearls, pearl, pearl. Then we're going to do it again. So you've got the two knit stitches here, knit one, and then we're going to make one. Pick up the horizontal bar, pop it onto the left hand needle, and then put the right hand needle in and over the top so that you're into the back of that stitch and then knit it and then knit the next one. Then we purl two, one, two, and then we knit two. Now that repeat goes right to the end of this row, at which point you should have 114 stitches. So I'm going to meet you at the back of the, the end of this row for the next part. Um, don't forget, it's much easier to follow this if you print off the pattern and you've got it sitting next to you. When you're following this video, it's a really good idea to print the pattern off and have it next to you. Um, it's a free pattern download and the link to download the pattern is in the description just below this video. Right, I shall see you when I get to the end of the increase row.
So here we are now, we have done our 14 rows of rib and the increase row. And we're going to change from the four and a half millimeter needle up to the five millimeter needle. And the only way, that, you know, the way that we do that is just to knit straight onto the five millimeter needle. There's nothing complicated there. This is where we meet the cable needle. Now, if you've never used, you've never done cables before, you might not never have seen one of these little cable needles. They come in all different shapes and sizes, and so sometimes they have this little dip in them to hold cape, to hold stitches. Sometimes they're just straight. Um, sometimes they can be more of a V, all kinds of different shapes. But what they're used to do is to hold stitches either in front of the work or behind the work. A cable is just stitches that are knitted out of order. And you'll see that as we go along. And they're written in a simple way. They're written as a C for cable, and then a number, and then either a B or an F for cable forward and cable back. And I'll show you how this works as we go along. So I'll grab the first five millimeter needle. So in um, the pattern, we have a few rows that we, we set up now ready for the cable. This cable repeat is eight rows long. And so there's only one cabling row and the rest is very straightforward. So we're gonna set up for that now. So the first thing we do is that we purl two. And you can see we've already got purl stitches on the needle there. So we're gonna purl two, one, two. Then we're going to knit 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And you might find when you knit this first row, onto a bigger needle, it does sometimes feel a little bit tighter, but that will improve with you as soon as you start to work a few rows. The next thing we do is purl two. And that is the repeat that we follow across this first row of the cable repeat. So we purl two, knit 12, purl two, all the way across. So I've got the two purls, I'm gonna knit another 12, um, and this is setting up for some cables that are going to be six, um, six stitches wide. Let's see where I am now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then the same thing again. So I'll meet you at the end of row one when we get to the other. So all the stitches have been knitted onto the five millimeter needle. So I've picked up the other one for row two. This is row two of the cable repeat. And for row two, we're going to follow what's already there. So we're going to knit two and then purl 12, knit two, knit two. So we're going to do the same thing, but reversed all the way along. So we do knit two, and then we're going to purl 12. And look, you can tell, even if you didn't have it written down, here are our purl bumps. So 12 purl bumps and two knit stitches. So this is what I need you to follow all the way along the row. This is row two. So we're going to purl 12. I've got quite long needles here. So I'm balancing them. If I clack a bit, I'm sorry about that. So we purl 12, you see we come up to a knit two, so we're going to put the yarn around to the back and knit one, two. And then we're going to bring the yarn around to the front and purl another 12. So follow your pattern. This is the second row of the eight row repeat. So we're going to do that all the way along, purl 12, knit two, right to the end. I'll see you at the end of row two.
Right, so we've knitted rows one and two of the repeat for the cables and rows three and four are exactly the same. So you can see here that the, the, the area for the cable is just beginning. It's hard to see, but we've got pearls. We've got a little bit of stocking stitch emerging there and the pearl row and the pearl stitches. And this is where our cable is going to sit all the way along. So we're going to do another two rows, rows three and four, which are the same as rows one and two. Now remember, it's a good idea to download the pattern so you've got it sitting next to you. You can download it from the link that's in the description. It's a free pattern. So you can download that and it's much easier to follow. So for rows three and four, I'm going to do the same as I did for rows one and two. And that is to follow the stitches you've got there. So row three, purl two, knit 12, purl two to the end. And row four is the reverse of that. So check the pattern and I shall meet you here ready for row five. And at last, the row has come where we're going to do the actual cabling. So in this particular cable pattern, it's only on row five that we actually turn some stitches around. And the rest of the eight rows is just a very simple knit and purl. So we're going to use our lovely little cable needle here. And as you can see, if you look at your work, what you've ended up with in the last four rows is a little section of sort of plain stockinette with a channel of pearls either side. And if you look along the work, that's what you'll see. And it's these 12 stitches we've been knitting that are going to turn into a cable. Now the cable that we're going to be working, I like to call it a stag's head cable because it has two prongs. So we're going to work two cables in the 12 stitches. We're going to work six stitches that are going to go off to the right and six stitches that are going to go off to the left. And let's start off. So the beginning of the pattern and just so that you've got this, remember you can download the pattern from the link in the description underneath this video and it's a free pattern and I really strongly suggest you do that. We're going to work two purl stitches at the beginning of the row. Now, the first cable. Grab your cable needle. The first instruction is C6B, and that means we're going to use a cable which is six stitches wide back. So what we do, the first thing we do is we work out your six stitches, just that six there. We're going to work three at a time. So I'm going to pick up the first three stitches on my cable needle here and I'm going to hold the cable needle. I'm going to let it drop to the back of the work. It's like behind. Pick up your needle. So you've got your left and right hand needles here and the cable needle at the back holding those three stitches. I'm going to knit the next three stitches off my left hand needle. So these ones are going to skip around here and then we're going to knit these three afterwards. So they change position on their own. So I'm going to let those drop out the way, knit these three, one, two, three, and then we're going to knit the three stitches off the cable needle, cable needle that's sitting at the back here. So we just reach around, one, two, three. And if you look at that, it's quite hard to see first off, but what's happened here is that it's sort of done a little crossover, some stitches back there, some stitches in the front. So that's a cable back and the cable back always goes off to the right. Now to create the stag's horn cable going to the left direction, we're going to do a cable forward. And it's the same thing 
We're going to work over six stitches. The instruction in the pattern is C for cable, 6F for forward. So we halve the number of stitches. So we take three off. And this time, we're going to let the cable needle dangle forwards. So we're going to knit three stitches off your main needle here, leaving those three dangling. One, two, three. And now we're going to knit these three off the cable needle. One, two, Now, if you look at that, you can just about see a little V has formed. And as we knit the next rows, you'll see that this will grow up into the stag's horn. So the next part on our needles, we've got two purl stitches here. So I'm going to bring the yarn forward and we're going to knit or purl those two stitches. And then we're going to do the stag's, stag's horn cable again. So grab the cable needle and it's cable back first. So we're going to take three stitches off the left hand needle and let them fall to the back. We're going to knit three stitches off the left hand needle. One, two, three. And then we're going to knit the three stitches off the cable needle. Now these things you do tend to have to sort of twiddle about a bit, sort of bend around a little bit, but it's quite fun. And remember in the whole of the eight row repeat, you only have to do this row once. So there we go, that's gone the back off to the right and now we're going to do cable forward so we pick up three stitches from the left hand needle and we let them fall forward forward right against you and then we knit three stitches off the main needle with those cable stitches sitting in the front and then we're going to knit them off the cable needle. One, two, three. Can you see what's happening there? So we've got the beginnings of two stag's head cables. So we have two pearl stitches. And I'm going to do one more just to consolidate for you. So we're going to do the back first. We're going to do cable back first. So we take one, two, three off and hold them at the back. Knit three off your main left hand needle. Okay. And then wiggle around and we're going to knit the three stitches. Oops, that's just fallen off. Three stitches off the cable needle, which is at the back. One, two, three. Then the next one is cable forward, which will give us a slant to the left. And remember, the cable number that you see in the pattern is always halved. So the instruction actually in the pattern is C6B or C6F and we work half one way and half the other. So we do one, two, three. So you always cut that number in half. This is a cable forward. So half of those stitches come forward. Then we knit three stitches off the left hand needle. One, two, three. And then we're going to knit the three stitches off our cable needle. 
Now, when you get very proficient at cables, a lot of people don't use a cable needle. There are all kinds of other ways of moving the stitches around and lifting stitches over the top. But I suggest, until you're very proficient, you stick with a cable needle just so that you don't drop anything. So can you see, this is the way it's going. And this repeat, we do all the way across row five, and I will meet you back here for row six. Now you can see you've finished row five. I've just finished that one, which is the, the, the cables, the beginning of the cables. And then we have another three rows to work before we get to the beginning of the repeat. And I just want to show you in the swatch I showed you earlier. What we've done here, you can see, is that we've created the bottom of these cables. And when you work the next few rows, it will elongate the stag's horn. And when it stretches out, that's what it looks like. So for our next row, which is in the pattern is row six. We're working on the wrong side row at the back of the cables. So here it's absolutely the same as you've done previously. You follow what the stitches are on the needle. And so we have here, for example, and you'll see this in the pattern itself, two knit rows and then 12 purls and then two knits. So when you look at row six in the pattern, it will say it's the same as row two and row two is knit two, purl 12, knit two, all the way along. So we'll start that and I'll just show you, it's just the same as when we've worked it in the past, this row. So I'm just going to, these quite long needles I've got here, so it's quite hard to get them not to wobble all over the place while you're watching. So I've knitted two, now I'm going to purl 12. One, two. And it might feel a little bit stiffer because the stitches have been twisted around on the front. You can see, for example, that doesn't look very normal, but it is entirely normal and it's just where the stitches have been twisted for our cable on purpose. So I'm carrying on with the pearls. You can see in the back, um, there's a 12 pearls and two knits. And if I just show you how that looks in the back, you can see, I can actually put my finger up there where the cable has twisted over, which is exactly what it should be doing. And so we work this way all the way along row, uh, row six and row seven and row eight. And then the whole eight row pattern begins again. So um, I'm going to leave you there and we're going to switch on to my bigger swatch, which will show us what to do when you've done all your cable repeats. And it's quite clear in the pattern this um, cable repeat, but it's an eight row repeat. And you work those eight rows um, three times, four times in total, I think. But you can check that in the pattern. But let's switch now, as if by the miracle of time, we're going into a hat that's a bit further along. I shall see you in just a minute. Okay, so we've got to the point where we have done our rib, worked the cable repeats, and we had to work a further 26 rows, and we're back now at the 26 row point. Now, each one of these cable repeats is eight stitches, uh, sorry, eight rows long. And what we've got here is an eight row repeat plus two stitches, which gives us the 26 rows from here to there. So the next thing we're going to do is to start to decrease. And we're gonna do a decrease row on the right side here by decreasing as we cable in between the cables. And I'm just gonna show you on this finished hat. Firstly, just 
when you stretch it out, you can see those lovely stags heads coming and that's what it, the finished hat will look at look like but what happens is this is the point we're at now we're going to decrease up to the top of the hat and we do that by making some smaller cables with a decrease in them and again here and even a little tiny one up here um, they look like sort of slightly smaller little stags head cables but you can see that they are the same shape and that works all the way up to the top of the hat. So I'm going to show you how we work this decrease here. I'm switching over from my, I've been using a metal cable needle, but I'm actually switching over to a little wooden cable needle because I don't want this to slip. And I've also changed over from straight needles onto a cable needle, uh, um, a circular needle. Now that's only because my big needles were clacking on the video and I don't want that to happen. But you just can carry on with yours. So what we first of all do is we purl, because we're on the right row here, we're going to purl the two stitches at the beginning of the row. Now I'm going to get my little cable needle here and this is how we do the first decrease of the cable back. So we're going to take three stitches, as we have done on all the cable rows, onto the cable needle and then just hold it at the back of the work, like that. Then, oh, needle falling out there, sorry. Then I'm going to knit one from my left hand needle here. And then to work this decrease, we're actually going to hold these two needles next to each other and we're going to knit these two stitches together. And I'm going to do that twice. In order to do that, I'm going to pick the stitch up on my needle there and just slide it across and also put it through the one on the cable needle. So you can see I've got the two stitches there on the needle and then just knit them together, just like you'd knit any other two stitches together and then slide them off. And this is why I've switched onto my wooden cable needle so that it doesn't slip. So next step, we're going to do that again. So we're going to pick up the stitch from the left hand needle and a stitch from the cable needle, bring the yarn around and knit those two together and then just wriggle them off gently. There we go. We've got one left on the cable needle at the back, so I'm going to knit that one. And what we've managed to do there is to still create that little cable going off to the right, but we've decreased as we've done it. Now to make this the next, the cable forward work, we have to do it in a slightly different way. So we take the three stitches off, one, two, three, and we hold them forward. Remember, this is the left leaning decrease. And so what we do is we're going to do a decrease where we slip one, knit one and pass the slip stitch over. So the first thing we do is I'm going to knit the first stitch like we did before from the left hand needle. There. And then to do the decrease like we've done just previously, but to do it so that it's leaning to the left, we are going to slip one from the cable needle, which is here. So we slip that one off, just slip it onto the right hand needle. Then we knit one from the left hand needle, there. And then you can see there is the slip stitch, the slipped one, and I'm gonna lift that over the knitted one. Let's do that again. So I'm going to slip one from the cable needle. Let's pull that through a little bit knit one from the left hand needle and then lift the slipped stitch over and then we've got one left um, there on the cable needle and that's given us that mini little stags on there and we're up to the point where we've got two to purl. So we've got two to purl. 
and that's the decrease. Now let's just show you that again and then it's something we're going to work across all the way across the row. We take the three stitches onto the cable needle and sit it at the back of the work because this is a cable back. We knit the first stitch from the left hand needle like that and then I'm going to line these two up and we're going to knit the two stitches together. Where's my yarn? There it is. So I pick up the first one and I pick up one from the cable needle, yarn around, under and off and we do that again. So I'm going to pick it up from the left needle, one from the cable needle, you see those two there, yarn around and bring it under so you're just knitting them together. Oops, it's just fallen off. This is why I switched to my um, wooden needle and then we just knit the last one off the cable needle. And again, that's sending us off to the left. And then here, we're going to do the forward yarn, the cable forward decrease. So you put the three stitches onto your cable needle and let it fall forward. Then I'm going to knit one from the left hand needle. And then we're going to do our SKPO. So this is where we slip one from the cable needle, like that. Knit one from the left hand needle. And then we lift up the slipped stitch and pull it over the top. So let's do that one again. Slip. From the cable needle, knit one from the back, whoopsie, and then we just lift the slipped stitch over. We end up with one left on the cable needle. I'm just going to knit that one. So that is the decrease row for this cable. So I'm just going to work along to the bottom of the row, right to the end, doing this each time, and I'll see you there. Right, so I've worked the cable decrease all the way along that row. And when we turn the work onto the back, we're going to work the next five rows in exactly the same way that we have throughout this cabling. We're just going to follow what's there. So it just looks a little bit bumpier because we've got a few decreases along the way. So I'll just start. Um, we follow what's there. So we knit two. And then this time, instead of knitting or purling 12, we've actually only got eight to work because we've decreased a few stitches along the way. So I just wanted to show you, although it is the same, it's a shorter number, uh, it does look a bit bumpy at the back here, but that's absolutely fine. You just follow what we've done before. So we're just going to purl all the way along through this new decreased cable. And when you get up to the next knit two, you'll see it. And sometimes it does feel slightly stiffer just working along those rows because of the decrease and then knit two. And so we follow the usual rows that we've been doing all the way through and it's in the pattern. We follow five rows from here and then we're going to do another cable row. So I shall see you for the next cable row. Right, so we've worked the five rows since our decrease cable here. So now I'm going to work another cable row and this time because the cables are going to be smaller um, we have less stitches in that section there. So there's the two purl stitches, two purl stitches. We have eight stitches in the middle there to cable. So this time we're going to purl two Oops. And because we've only got eight stitches now in that section, 
we're going to cable back four and cable forward four. So if we've got four, we take that in half, so there's two stitches. So we hold two stitches in the back. We knit two stitches from the left hand needle. So it's just back to normal cabling now. And then we knit the two stitches from the cable needle. And then when we cable forward, we take two stitches onto the cable needle and pull it forward. We knit two from the left needle and two from the cable needle. So this is a smaller, whoopsie, smaller little cable there. And you can see that's just gonna be a little tiny one. And if I show you on the hat, you can see there's our decrease cable and here's our smaller cable and there is just one little bit smaller one to come. So let's just do that one again. And don't worry if it doesn't really look quite as defined as the others. It will be when it's actually finished and the fabric is stretched out and it looks a little bit more like a cable. So we have two pearl stitches here. One, two, and then with the cable needle, we take two stitches and hold them to the back. One, two, and then we knit the two stitches from the cable needle. And then we take two stitches and bring it forwards, knit two from the left hand needle, and then knit two from that cable needle. And that is the repeat for all the way across this row, is that we work this smaller cable, and then after that, we're gonna work another five rows. So, the five rows are just as we normally have been set. You know, you follow the knits and the pearls straight, just in the same way that you have for this. It's just that the cable is slightly smaller. So we knit this cable row, then we do five rows the same, and I'll meet you at the other end. And I just wanted to say, for my cable needle here, when I said I'd switch to a wooden needle, this is just a small double pointed needle. So if you don't have an actual cable needle, root through your needles and see if you've got a double pointed needle, a DPN, and you can use that. This one is good because it's wooden and it's not gonna slip, but any double pointed needle will do. Right, I shall see you after this cable row plus five. Okay, so we worked the last little short cable here and now we're going to do another decrease just to bring the top of the hat in and I'll show you here, here it is, little teeny weeny one just there um, that'll take us up to the top of the hat. So, got my cable needle um, and as I said I'm using um, a circular needle I'm using put my stitches on the circular needle only because I don't want to have lots of banging and noise for you on this but you can use just normal straight needles or if you want to you can use a circular needle which is but I'm just using it as a straight needle nothing else right so at this point we're going to do another cable decrease and I'll just show you the first ones there so we purl two and in a very similar way, to, very, just the same way that we did this before, what we're going to do is to take two stitches this time and hold it at the back of the work. And then we're going to knit these two stitches to these two stitches on the left hand needle. So we just take the first one from the left hand needle and one from the cable needle and knit them together. That's it. Just be careful you don't pull them all off at the same time. And it is a fine balance, this, just making sure that you're holding the needles absolutely together so that you don't drop your stitches when one from the left hand needle and the other one from the cable needle. Knit them together. 
and bring them off. And you can see just a little slight left lean there. And then when we do it for the cable forward, it is using the SKPO method that we've used before where we slip and knit. And so once you've got your two stitches forward on the cable needle, what we're going to do is to slip one from the cable needle and knit one from the left hand needle. And then if you remember, we, I'm just gonna hold that one in the front there, lift the slip stitch over. And this is when it's quite useful to have a longer sort of double pointed needle so that you don't lose that stitch falling off. So in the same way, we slip it off the cable needle, we knit one from the left hand needle, and then we lift to slip stitch over. So you can see there, there is a little tiny weeny stag's horn going on. I'll just do that again for you. So we purl two. And this is a very common thing with cable patterns is that you get a little bit of, because there's a, a ridge that runs down through the cables in most cases, you do get a little bit of respite from your cabling where there's just two little stitches to knit or purl. I always think that's very nice to give you a break. All right, so there we take the two stitches, we hold it behind the work which is the cable back. Then we're going to knit these together. So we pick up the stitch from the left hand needle, stitch from the cable needle, knit them together, slide them off. And we do the same thing. Left hand needle, cable needle, knit them together, slide them off. And then we're going to do it with the SKPO method for the cable front. So I'm just going to Hold those forward and we're going to slip one from the cable needle, knit one from the left needle and then lift the slipped stitch over. Okay, if I hold that out the way you can see it. There. And again, slip it from the cable needle, knit one from the left hand needle and slip the slip stitch over. And we're back to the two pearls. So that is how this decrease row is going to work. You can see just a little bit there. So I shall meet you at the end of this row. So we've done that decrease row and what we're going to do now is just work along the back and this time just as we've always done you follow the stitches. So it's a knit two, purl four, knit to repeat all the way along the back. And after this, we have a series of decrease rows, which will take us up to the top of the hat. So I'll just show you, we just work following the stitches that are there. And obviously all of this is listed in your free pattern and the link to download the pattern is in the description underneath this video. Let's see. So I've just worked as we have there, knit two, purl four, knit two. So that is what we work all the way along this row. And then the next row will start some decreases towards the peak of the hat. Right, so here we are. We're up to this row where we've done our little small cable decrease and now we're going to have just a regular decrease row and this one is just about using knit two together and SKPO. So I'm just going to begin on the right hand row with two pearls which we're used to. Now we have four stitches in between the two pearl sections and here what we're going to do is to knit two together and then use SKPO. So I'm going to knit two together and then the old SKPO which we've used before here, slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. And then we're back to a purl two. Purl two. This really, really is such an interesting pattern because you do 
get to, if you've not done cables before, it teaches you how to follow a cable pattern, but also how to decrease within those cables and then how to decrease to get even further into the point of the hat. So we come against the four stitches together. So we do knit two together and again, slip one, knit one, and then pass the slip stitch over and then purl two. We'll just do that one more time. This is the repeat that goes along this row. Then we're back to the four knit stitches of the cable. So we do knit two together, slip one, knit one, and pass the slip stitch over. And you can see that that's beginning to pull you into the top. And if I show you on the hat, this is where we are, right up the top here. So I'm going to carry on this row. After this row, where we do the decrease, there is just a straightforward purl row of just follow the stitches, knit two, purl two, knit two, all the way through. And then we have another decrease row. So I shall see you in two rows time. Okay, so we're now on to our next decrease row and I've just included this one. These decreases and rows that we're doing from this point onwards are very much just using purl two together and knit two together, that sort of thing. So these are stitches that you probably already know. So just to show you, this is a decrease row where we use purl two together. And if you haven't done that, it's very straightforward. Similarly to knit two together, we just take the needle and slide it in front of two stitches, two purl stitches, and then we purl them together like that. I'm going to take the yarn around to the back to knit the next two stitches, bring it to the front, and we're going to purl two together. So just put your needle up into the two purl stitches, yarn around the front, and bring it down like a normal purl. Yarn around the back to knit two, yarn around the front to purl two together. I'm just taking the needle up underneath at the front of the work and then purl and put it back down again. So this is our repeat for this row, knit two, yarn in the front to purl two together. Right, I shall see you now at the end of the next few rows. Um, there's two more decrease rows and then we're ready to sew the hat up. So I shall see you there. So we've worked the last two decrease rows. The last row was a purl two together and that's just all the way across. I've just knitted that one. And I'll show you why that's such a good idea in just a second. So. I'm going to leave a long tail and the reason why I'm going to take a long tail off this ball is because we'll use it to sew the hat together. So I've got my long tail here and a needle. So I'm just going to pop the yarn onto my tapestry needle. It's a nice big one with a big eye for threading there. And so in order to sew this up, let's turn that work around so you can see more easily. I just wanted to point out, just from a knitting nerd kind of point of view, the last row was a knit two together, even though it was on the right side. And the reason for that is that it gives you these nice little pearl bumps. And when we cinch this in, it just is such a nice little feature. So I'm going to just thread the stitches off the needle onto my long tail and um, go to get that caught up and just take your time with this threading them on get rid of those vehicles and the reason this is so lovely is that when you cinch these together it just comes up and just the sweetest little, there's the stitches and there are the little pearl bumps 
just looks like such a nice little design feature, such a clever little thing from our lovely design team. And when you pull that nice and tightly, I'm just going to um, put my needle in there just to pull it tight. You end up with such a nice little circle with the pearl bumps around, really nice. Now, sewing up. We're going to bring these two sides together and this is really a matter of preference. Um, there's lots and lots of ways of sewing up. Probably here you can either use a mattress stitch because we're on the right side of the work and that gives us a nice sort of invisible join and we do that by picking up the horizontal bars inside the rows and you can see them there. So we, you can either do that and sew the horizontal bars together or if you want to, you can just take the side, the side, excuse me, got my teeth in, the side stitches together like this and whip stitch it together. So I'm just going to do a little um, mattress stitch. I'm going to pick up the horizontal bar from each side of the hat. And this is always quite fun because you can see it sort of coming together. I'm going to pick up, let's find one there, there's one. And you do get a nice invisible join. And I'm showing you this just so I can pick up the bar. There's one there. When you've picked up a few like this and you can see when I pull it, it just pulls them together and you can't see. Let's just do a few more stitches. So wriggle around until you find that horizontal bar. There's one there. And just work your way. You don't have to use every single row. Work your way down until you get to the bottom. So however you'd like to stitch this one up, it's entirely up to you. Uh, it's not specified in the pattern, so it's whatever you prefer. There's a little horizontal bar there. And I shall meet you at the bottom when we're all sewn up. The last bit of the hat. Now I've made a little pom-pom here. I've just got to the end of sewing up that seam and that's with mattress stitch and you really can't see a seam in there but it is there. Just a little reminder for sewing in ends. If you um, just make sure that your ends are really buried when you sew them in. Um, I'm just going to sew these together here and to sew them in when it's got a nice rib like this it's a great opportunity to just weave your end in and out of the stitches so that you know that end isn't going to come out. Particularly long end, I was probably a bit overzealous with my, <laughs> my end for sewing in. But just take it up through the rib inside the hat and then don't forget to come back down again so that the end is really sort of buried in and it's not going to come undone. And that's what you need to do with all your ends. So that's the end where you changed onto the second ball of yarn. Um, and the cast on end, which is this one. So again, I'm just going to take this one inside and go up a rib. And that's a really, really good way because then it's hidden but tidily, so you can't see it later on. Um, I'll finish that later. And then with the pom-pom, just a little tip. I've made a pom-pom with the remaining yarn that was on the second ball. But what is a great idea is once you've made the pom-pom and you've trimmed it down, if you just dangle the pom-pom on a long string like that, long string like that, um, over a boiling kettle, 
don't boil a kettle specifically, but when you're making a cup of tea, dangle it over. And what happens is that the ends of the pom-pom fluff up and you get a really nice fluffy pom-pom. So all that's left to do is to stitch the pom-pom onto your hat. And all you need to do is get one of the ends, thread it through there, and then go up onto that lovely little circle, pop your needle in, and bring the yarn right through. And then I'm going to take the other one from the pom-pom. And take it in over the other side of the circle. And then if I just turn that inside out, Here are those two, two ends. I'm going to cut them down a bit because they're pretty long. There are the two ends that, of the pom-pom string. I'm going to first of all tie them in a knot, nice and tight, so the pom-pom is really tightly on. And then sew these ends in. And you could even make sure you're sewing through the pom-pom a bit so that you're really securing, there we go, the pom-pom to the hat so that it's nicely sewn in. And once you've sewn those two ends in, turn it round back and there I could obviously sew those in a bit more later, but there is your gorgeous hat with pom-pom and a really nice stag's head cable. I bet you never thought you could knit cables like that. Well done. Don't forget, like and subscribe to the channel for lots more knitting projects, tips and techniques. And leave me a comment and tell me what you were going to knit. Happy knitting.